Hello friends, so welcome to the Technopic channel. Uh, in this video, I'm going to explain you how we can convert uh, uh, rows to a column. Okay. So what is the meaning of that? So suppose we have a employee table, right? Employee salary table, where we have a salary of each employee for each month. Okay. We can see that. So if I wanted to represent this data uh, in a different format, different format means I want to convert this month year column into a column at a column level. So whatever the distinct values that we have in a month year that should come at a column level so for example i can have a uh, employee number over here so i can have a distinct employees listed down over here in the employee uh, in the employee column and i can have a column like january 2020 uh, 2020 something like this and salary for employee one for january Okay, so how we can do this uh, with the help of Excel as well as uh, SQL. So in Excel, it's very simple with the help of pivot functionality, we can achieve this. So same way we can do this in SQL, but in while doing the, uh, you know, writing the SQL, I don't want to use a pivot table. Okay, we will use something different uh, conditions, conditional statement to convert to achieve this result. Okay, so first of all, in Excel, how we can achieve this. So we can just clear, uh, select on particular column. Just click on Control T. Then this whole data is get converted into a table. Then click on the Insert. Go to the Pivot table. Okay. So in Pivot table, select the From table and Range. You can either select the table or range. But uh, the advantage of using a table is that once if if we have a more if we in a later stage if we wanted to add more data, then we don't need to change the range over here. Okay. So, so table name, how we can get a table name? So, first of all, see. So, if you go to the, if you select the, you know, in this table, you, you will see the uh, one header over here, table design. Here, you can see the table name, right? So, table here. So, we can change the table name from here. Okay. So, now we have a table like an employee salary. Then we can now go to the, we can now use a pivot table. Select the form table, employee salary. Then we can see the one panel uh, will come out when we are using the pivot table. Then when, uh, while we are doing the uh, while we are analyzing the data, it's very important to understand what are the dimension and what are the measures uh, we have in the data. So I don't want to go deep into that, but uh, just understand. Thus, we just need to understand what are the dimensions and measures. In our case, we have two dimensions like the employee number and month year, and we have a one major like a salary. Now, I want employee number to be present in the row, row wise itself. So these are the rows, right? So what I can do, I just put out, I just just click on the employee number and put that fit into row level panel. Okay. Now I want this January, February into a column. So what are the values present in a you know, month year column? I want to represent that in a column level. So how we can do that? I just click on the month year and put in a column section. Now by default, the month year is treated as a date. So we, we are getting, uh, so by default, we are getting a more, uh, we can, uh, or I can say we can, uh, we can extract the days or month from that particular month. So this is Excel functionality, but I don't want to utilize that. So I just, I just wanted to use a month year, whatever, we, whatever the values we have in a, in a month year column. Now, if you see, we need a, we need to understand the salary for each employee for particular month. So how we can achieve that? So just click on the salary and put it, put into a value section. So values, you can see we have a. Uh, by default, we are getting a summation of a salary. So in, in any scenario or whatever the scenario that we are working on, so you can change the functions from here, right? Just click on that field, value field setting, click on value field setting, and then we can see number of uh, aggregated functions we can see that you can utilize for your analysis as per your requirement. So this is how we can achieve this with the help of Excel. Now, how we can do the same? How we can achieve? How we can create the same structure. Okay. How we can achieve the same structure with the help of SQL that we can see. So first of all, I'm not using a pivot function um, uh, for this 
uh, for this example uh, okay so whatever techniques i'm going to use over here you can achieve this in any database that you have okay so uh, currently i am uh, using a postgres sql database so in postgres sql you can see uh, we have a hr schema and in hr we have a table like employee salary okay so this technique you can use in any database postgres sql oracle sql server mysql okay if it if, if any database that doesn't does not uh, have a pivot functionality then how we can do this So first of all, we can see the what kind of data available in employee salary table. So we have HR schema, HR dot EMP dot style. This is the limit ten. So when we are when we are, you know, just if you wanted to just analyze the data, we want to know what kind of data is present in the table. We just need to use the limit clause. which is the same data that we have in excel okay and to convert this data into this format select from hr dot salary i can give the ls as an employee we don't have any filter so i'm not writing any bear clause so if you see this employee for example 7369 gets converted into a single value right over here okay so this rows it groups into a single value so definitely we need to use a group by clause chart dot mp number okay and as we know whatever the columns that we can see uh, that we are writing in a group by clause we can write in a select clause as well so this is the first step now if you see these values that we uh, we can see january february it gets converted into a column so now how we can achieve that with the help of uh, sql so we can write conditional statement like a case when char dot month year equal to january and then what we need so we need a salary right so this is the salary value so i'm just writing salary hr dot salary else so if the value if the month year value is equal to jan 2022 22 then i need a salary if the value is not equal to jan 22 just i just i just i don't want any value or i just want a zero for that so else is zero and and what functions we need uh, so we need to apply the aggregated function for this condition right so we are getting the salary if this condition match we will get a salary but what i need i need a summation or need a sum of that salary for that particular month so i will write sum of this condition statement this ls is as jan 2020 okay from close entry okay sorry by name you need to employee number employee number okay so by mistake i have put the wrong alias for the column so i i need to use uh, employee emp as alias for every verb or oh, whatever what are the columns that i have mentioned so So as you can see, uh, I can uh, I got the January 2020 value for each employee. So if you see, we just have a 16 rows. So we have a 16 listing employees present in the employee salary table. So similar way, we can write it for other month. 
so I'm not writing for all the months so I'm just adding for a few months you just need to change the value over here right Feb, January, February, March then we have April right uh, So similarly, we can add all the months, so all the 12 months. Now the structure is the same that what we have seen over here. Also, we can see the grand total over here. So that also we can achieve. Sorry. So uh, how we can achieve or how we can have a grand total. So we can have a group by roll up. Clause. So this is the clause we can use group by roll up. Employee. So employee number is the dimensions. So what it will do, it will, what are the values are on the basis of this, these dimensions, we will get a grand total for each employee for each month. Okay. Grand total, 31625, right? So here also we are 31625. Now this is on the top, uh, this, uh, come out on the top row right if you wanted to put that in the bottom that also we can achieve with, with the help of order by clause order by emp dot emp number then write nulls right so descend Okay, so nurse last. Okay. So you can see the the grand total that extra row that appears on the bottom side. Okay. So what is the meaning of that? Order the employee number on the ascending. So by default is ascending order. And what if the if the if the values present into employee number is null, then put that all the rows or all the values in the on the bottom side so we, if we change it change it up first then the null values come on the top top side or on the top roads okay so based upon our requirement we can change this statement or order by clause so if you want I employee number as a descending you can put descending over here employee number descending null last so it will sort the employees on the descending order and if the values are null, then it will put the you no know, null values in the bottom side. If you see 799 is the highest number that come on the top. And if the values are null, that come on the bottom side because we have put the last over here. Okay. So now instead of this null, we need to put the grand total. We need to represent this null as a grand total, right? So how we can do that? It's, it's very simple. So we need to convert the nulls into a, we need to add the values for that null. So in the postgres we can use a colex total Okay, so if, if, what this uh, message input syntax of type is numeric. So this employee number is numeric and we are converting the column that uh, the data type of that column is a numeric, right? And we are assigning the varchar values or text values. So we can convert employee number to a varchar. So this is the Postgres SQL syntax, but uh, in Oracle, at, uh, again, you can use NVL. And in Oracle, I think you might or you might not convert you you don't need to convert that uh, you know numeric to a is automatically get converts but you can use the nvl or you can use a cast or two care functions in oracle okay or whatever the functions that we have in whatever database we are using whichever database we are using okay so i, I have converted this employee number to varchar and then i assigned a grand total if the if the this employee number is null so you can see the grand total 
will uh, then we're gonna appear uh, gonna appear in the in the instead of null. Okay, so this is the same structure as you can see we have grand total 31625 is the same. Because I have just put the random values and the values are same for the uh, for each employee for each month. That's why it's the grand total is the same. But uh, uh, you can try this uh, with your own data and you can analyze your data and you can try this case statements. Uh, conditional statement with the aggregated functions okay with the help of this you can achieve the pivot functionality if if the database does not have a pivot uh, functionality in your data if you don't have a pivot functionality in your database but using a case statement we can achieve this okay so hopefully uh, hopefully you will you will like the sessions and you will understand uh, and you will you, you will get you got some more insights uh from this video so thank you for watching this